Hi all, welcome back to the day at Tarawa. This is my part nine. Um, no, we're not starting a turn, Grant, are we? We're still in the middle of the turn. Yeah, we're on the US action phase. Uh, haven't started that yet. Um, left things with this little puzzle here about what were we going to do. Uh, well, just as well, I went and asked a question. Um, because it turns out that uh, the few ones I've had a uh, couple of comments from Jean and uh, Martin, um, and they both seem to be swaying towards uh, the thinking that this should be able to. Well, they don't know the exact what's what here, but I think my question basically was what's happened here. You know, we had a position D nine, D ten. D9 went and attacked that, wiped that out. D10 has now not got a unit in its field of fire. Can it continue with the assault action? Which means it's got to do part two of the assault action rather than part one as it started off with. So there's been some comments and some suggestions and whatever. Has, I'm still on the fence with that, I have to say. Um, you know, Jean... Uh, pointed out, I think some things have come up with him before, but when, when do you decide what something does? He does make a good point about um, uh, communication is always um, looked at the minute the turn, is it the turn starts or the Japanese fire card is drawn or whatever. Um, you know, you, you decide that, well, maybe, I'm saying whatever, maybe I should be clear here. Hang on. Yeah, 11.23, page 21. Communication status of Japanese positions is established at the beginning of the Japanese fire phase and does not change throughout the phase. A position out of communication at the start of the phase remains out of communication throughout the phase, even if Japanese fire reduces or eliminates US units that are blocking communication during a US attack or close combat. Japanese communication status is determined at the moment of resolution. So yeah, and I think what is point there is you, you do set that at the beginning so I think what he's also saying that we set this at the beginning and say that okay they are going to carry out the assault action right now I'm I'm fine with all that up to now and also though he came back with another response and the way he worded it would have been perfect in the rule book if that, if that if that is the intention and it may well be you know what um I t I'm tending to agree with the guys, but uh, I still I still just feel there's a little bit of doubt. I could see it going either way with us. I've actually asked Martin to go and get on the hotline and find out for sure, get the big, get the main man involved. <laughs> um, so, and uh, yeah, what, what we're doing is we're saying these two are going to carry out this whole action, but what we're saying from the start is, right, they're both, they're both within field. They've both got units in fields of fire, and they're going to they're going to carry that out, that out. If then the second one, they've got to do them individually. If then the second one doesn't have the unit in fields of fire, I think there's an argument to say that that unit should then stop and then not be able to carry it out because it's already. Can it then change and say right? There's, you know, you know you could say you could say that as well. If you're if you're saying that communication is set set up the beginning of the Japanese fire phase. And if you're saying that at the beginning of the phase that we check this unit, um, it says that they're going to carry out the assault action, okay, fair enough. But can you not then also say that they're going to carry out the assault action in, in regard to having units in its field of fire? And then if it's not, then that maybe then stops that from then carrying out the other part. And I'm not arguing this case to um, to the extent of trying to avoid this guy getting uh, attacked. You know, I'm not... This game's... I know this game's brutal enough. It's, it, it's fine. I mean, it's, you know, if, if this is going to close combat that, then so be it. Uh, I'm not trying to avoid that. I do think... I still do think I could see it either way. Now, if I was to sway one way or the other now... Although earlier on, I was going to sway to my side of things, thinking that, no, it can't do it. And now I've got two guys suggesting that they feel that it should be able to do this. 
Um, and I think they are swaying me that way. I think they are making it, uh, making it sound like it's more than likely going to be the the right way of looking at it. But, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if Martin might ask John. I don't know. Um, I'm going to I'm going to leave it sitting for a little bit longer and then um, probably conclude as the guys have said and, and attack that. Well, I'm going to have to decide because we're in the US action phases now, but I can leave this area slightly. The only thing I can't do is remove this disruption marker, um, which is something that I would do at the beginning of the US action phase. So... Yeah, that could make things awkward. Well, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? Because if he's going to do his thing, he's going to do it on that guy because we've decided it has to be a position hex and that's not in a position hex. That's, that's not in a position hex. I don't know if he could uh, go for the hero anyway. I, I, I kind of doubt that. I would need to look more into that. And then that's the only one that's within three. So that is his target. So if he can carry out the assault action... Um, you know, and sort of change it up a little bit. Modi Martin's words were modify it. And I tried to suggest, he, he talked about not rechecking. I said, is that not rechecking? Gene said he didn't feel like that was rechecking. It is modifying it. But I agree, it is all part of the one that's all action. That's all action can either do this or do that, you know? It's just that when we first set the action up, he was doing that, and now he's suddenly doing something different. So that is changing, I mean, okay, it is modifying it, but is that, is that right? I don't know, I could, yeah, I still, mm. and, and certainly Martin didn't, I didn't have, I don't think he felt clear about it, and he did suggest that he felt it was going that way, at least I think he did, to be honest, his words were, a little bit, um, I wasn't sure. I was looking through it thinking, at first, right, is he swaying towards that way, swaying towards that way? But no, I think he was saying that that could, that he would, along the same lines as what Gene was thinking, that he could do that. So uh, I'll leave it a little while yet. <laughs> i see if any more talk uh, comes of it. And we'll, um, we'll just press on. Um, and I'll just leave that side of the board for now. Um, so yes, action phase. Well, I mean, across across that side. Well, what, I suppose let's just have a glance at. It. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. Are these guys going to survive? I'd like to think they might put up a better fight, but maybe not. They're disrupted to start with. Uh, they've got four steps, so they're getting four cards. Um, but their first card. Uh, actually, I don't know what happens with that when they're when they are disrupted. What does it say? Yes, units you know, disrupted. You remove the disruption marker and skip ahead to five. Yeah, so basically it's the same. They'll attack us first, and then we won't get an attack. We'll just remove our disruption. Then they'll be back to them. So you know, but we have got a bit more. We've got four steps in the stack, whereas we only had two steps in the uh, the stack previously. So. So I may have a better chance, and if that happens, he gets sent back. I'm not sure if he if he gets sent back to here. He probably does. I didn't read that either because we didn't need to because he he resolved these. Oh, oh no 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 no! I was going to take the disruption off, but that's not that's not right, is it? Because that is in blue, and um, yeah, it would have came off if it had been in one of the colours, but it wasn't. So. It's more likely they're going to be sitting there. They're going to get a free action anyway. So I probably don't need to think about actions for them. Well, he's going to be disrupted no matter what, isn't he? Because if this isn't allowed to happen, and for some reason somebody confirms that it's not, he's still going to be disrupted. If it does happen, well, he's either going to be disrupted or dead. <laughs> So, yeah. What I mean is he's not going to be able to do anything anyway. So let's move on. Well, I'll have a glance at this. Well, I could put... I could remove this disruption. As long as I remember that the situation with the red cube is still... 
you know, what I mean is if this is resolved, nothing happens here, I'm still going to be able to remove this disruption and, and then determine. Well, he's not tilted to say that he's done anything, right? So that's, that's a good point. So we're taking that disruption off. That's all we can do with that guy. Um, yeah, the, we'll, yeah, barrage. We need to look at barrage because we've not got any... Ah, uh, yeah, and he built depth as well. Even more reason to... Yeah, if he had... The barrage is not going to help, is it, when he's been at two strength. So let's, uh, let's double check on the rules for barrage because we haven't done that yet. Right, so conduct a barrage action, 8.4, page 18. Tank unit may conduct an action to barrage an eligible Japanese occupied hex. If the tank unit is in range of, but not adjacent to the target. Yeah, I think this is one, one thing I read, and, that, and that's been in all the games. Sorry, I was looking at them a bit now. They've never been able to be adjacent, and I was like baffled the last time. That was in the Saigon one, I think. Saigon? Saipan. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> um, so it can't be adjacent, but he's got to be in range. Well, his range is seven, so there's not an awful lot of issue there. They've they have a, quite a good range, um, and either of the following are true: the tank unit occupies a hex in the field of fire, target hex. Well, yeah, it does. So my guess is the next bit might be there's a hero. Oh no. An undisrupted infantry or engineer unit occupies a hex in the field of fire of the target hex. The unit is considered to be observing for the tank unit. Observing is not considered an action. In order for an infantry unit to observe for the tank unit, either the tank unit or the observing unit must be in command of an HQ. Okay, so there we go. So the HQ is important there uh, for the reasons. If these conditions are met... Draw a fire card and refer to the US barrage table to determine how the Japanese position is affected by barrage. If the fire card does not show the Japanese position's colour or the barraging unit's target symbol, the barrage has no effect. Uh, eligible targets. Japanese unit in a coastal position may be barraged, whether revealed or unrevealed. A Japanese unit in an inland position may be barraged only if revealed. Ah, okay. Uh, what are we trying to do? I think we're trying to barrage a coastal position, so that's okay. He's got depth, though, so it's going to be... I get the feeling we're two strength, and it's got depth. It means we're going to have to not only draw the colour, but also the symbol. So it might be not worthy of a, uh, an attempt. Well, it's a, if it's a free action, then maybe then. But... Um, it can be a target of more than one barrage, but may not be attacked in barrage in the same phase. A barrage against a target in a position group affects only the units in the target hex. An unrevealed unit in an inland position hex may not be barraged. Hex occupied by both US and Japanese units may not be barraged. Right, that's that. So, well, let's look at the table. I'll just try and go over the charts that I've got um, here. And it probably should... Um, yeah, we've got strength, two or four, and unfortunately we've only got two. Um, so, does the Japanese have depth? Yes. So, if we draw the position colour, and and not the symbol, uh, sorry, if we don't draw the colour and the symbol, it's no effect, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's no effect, no effect. Right. There's no point looking at a clone, Grant. What what's the effect? Um, yeah, because it's it's got depth, so there's no effect. Yeah, I was I was right. We need we need the colour and the symbol uh, to disrupt it. That's right, isn't it? Because it's got depth, yes, no effect, yes, no effect, and then it doesn't apply here. Because we need, we need two yeses. So that's rubbish. Uh, the fact it's a free action might still be worthwhile carrying it out. Uh, okay. And, uh, okay, like I said, along this side, it doesn't look like we're going to need an action. 
no matter what happens, because the HQ is in between the both. Now the HQ can give all these these two a free action, but you know what what are we going to do with our main? I suppose thing is this this is an intense boy. I think what I'd probably like to do is maybe move this into here. That's going to cost me an action though. But um, before I do that, I should take on the free barrage action. You never know, we might get lucky. We're going to need a blue triangle. So, um, well, I mean, what else are you going to do? <sighs> yeah. And, and uh, well, actually, hang on. Yeah, he, be he benefits from being able to barrage this in two ways, actually. He is sitting in the field of fire of blue, so he doesn't really need the headquarters thing, or the spotting. He doesn't need a unit spotting for him. But um, these units are also, well, and this unit, they're also in blue field of fire. Well, everything's in control. Everything's uh, being commanded by the HQ, Grant. So it's fine. It, it all works. So do I take the barrage on that? I mean, what else are you going to do with the tank? I'm not. I'm not going to do any more. There's no. He's in quite a good position. This yeah. There's not really an awful lot going on. So let let's do it. So I'm going to give him a free action from the HQ. Um, yeah, I'm going to give him a free action attempt to barrage that. So we need. The colour and the symbol. So it's the position colour, which is blue. And we need the triangle. So we need both on the card. If we only get one or the other, then it's not any good. Hey, right, come on. Bring some work across here. I've had some good work across at that other game, so we need some work across here. Well, to be honest, <laughs> a lot of the close combat at the beginning, Grant, were pretty lucky. Um... <laughs> Even John Brown made some comment about that, I think. Oh, but talking about beating his record, I don't know what his record was. I'm not quite sure what he's meaning there. Um, I haven't studied your comments yet, uh, fully yet, John, but I will. Right, a blue triangle. Come on. <gasps> Got the triangle. Got the triangle. Not the blue. Okay, so it doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, that would have been good. Uh, okay, so I think... If I've got a spare action, I'd like to move that into there, I think. Because then we can have an attack at this. So that's 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 an action I'd like to keep. Uh, and across this side... Um, well, disruption can be removed from this. That's Major Ryan. Yeah, that was the one thing John pointed out. I think I clicked to that one about he um doesn't matter who, who he's stacked with, he gives free actions to them all. He's got some different abilities, isn't he? So yeah, we were considering the other well, if I if I've got two actions free, I really want to attack with both of these and I'll take this guy out. Cause he needs mortar and bazooka. Um, this guy's got a bazooka and this guy's got a mortar, so oops. so it means I'm both attacking. And we've not got free actions there. Yeah, that's going to spoil because we've not got free actions at all here. That means you're going to do nothing with the rest of them. Well, you know what? I don't think I can. I can't do anything with that tank. He can only barrage into yellow, and there's nothing in yellow, and we've not got the HQ situation along this side. Um, to be honest, they're not in any great danger. He's in a little bit, he's in blue, but I mean, he, he, he went into close combat. This isn't in any danger, this isn't in any danger. Uh, mind you, can, mind, remember you can't move two hexes, Grant, so I think this could be a position where I could actually move this guy one, two in here think. But that's a paid for action as well. And that's in blue, so 
to get a barrage possibility for the, that tank, yeah, it's nah, nah. Because so how, how can the tanks move, actually? That's the point. Do they have... I don't think it differentiates between tanks for movement, does it? Well, hang on, let me think about that. Or look, look, up, look that up. I don't think it's any different to moving the tank. The only, the only thing being is there's two columns for uh, movement on the terrain side of things. US Infantry, Engineer and HQ movement column. And then there's all other US units movement. Uh, however, the only difference is if they move into a rough or crater hex, uh, they can move into it, but they must stop. That seems to be the only difference between the two. Um, so seems to suggest that this tank could... Mm, he's in green. No, if, if it's undisrupted, the two hex move. Uh, unit must end its move if it enters the hex in an intense field of fire of a non-disrupted enemy position. Or hex adjacent to an enemy unit, even if disrupted. So in actual fact, that tank could move one, two, because this guy's disrupted. Um, which doesn't really help either, does it? It could move one, two across to here, though, maybe, Grant. Um, and then it would be in the bully position. Um, sea wall hex. Yeah, it doesn't seem to. I don't think there's an issue with that. And that would be moving in a steady. Because here's the thing, and I remember making this blunder way back where. First time I played, well, probably the first few times I played DD at Omaha Beach. It talked about the bocage hexes, um, and it said you could move two hexes. Was that when it came into extended gain? You can move two hexes, but not if it was a bocage hex. And I thought you could move one and then end your move in a bocage hex, but you couldn't move two if you're moving your first hex in a bocage hex. But no. And I think this will be the same here. Uh, I just moved away from that. Move up to two hexes. Right, a unit must end its move if it enters a hex in an intense field of fire of a non disrupted enemy position. Well, actually, yeah. Well, it says moves limited to one hex. Well, I think that's what it's saying. Wait, like, say this was intense blue, then if I moved into there, I'd have to stop, right? If we had intense blue in here, right? And it's not, but if it was intense blue, what I'm reading there, I think I could go one, two. And I was thinking at first that it might be like what I was just talking about, the Omaha Beach bocage thing, where that wouldn't be the case. But the way that's worded, a unit must end its move if it enters a hex in the intense field of fire of a non-disrupted enemy position or a hex adjacent to an enemy unit, even if disrupted. That still tells me that I can move into the art. And a second hex moving into there, even if that was intense blue. So, that wouldn't be a bad play, moving that guy across to there, because then we could possibly disrupt that next turn uh, before we move something adjacent to it. However, that's going to use an action. Uh, and we want an action down here, and then we want two actions here. <laughs> so we want four actions. So there's your stumbling block, if you like. Um, I mean, you could do this and take a... Ch oh, well, actually, you could... Well, hang on. No, the gamble you're taking here is not that this guy is going to become undisrupted and start firing at you. The gamble is that this doesn't fire at this again. Because if that fires at that again, disrupts that, uh, well, not only that, it might lose his bazooka. No, he's keeping his bazooka. Fortunately. But he would be disrupted and then the, the, the attack on destroying that is finished. So if we happen to draw yellow and a 
Um, diamond, a yellow diamond on the next fire card, then that's that up in the air. <sighs> yes, indeed. The DDR games. <laughs> Right, uh, decisions, decisions then. Uh, let's be got more battery on my phone as well. Um, well, what's what's important? <laughs> well, they're all important, aren't they? I feel this guy's been wasted. To oh, hold on, Grant. Yeah, that's a thought. I could move this guy in here. I mean, okay, it's... Yeah, he's moving in intense blue, isn't he? Nah. But I would get a free move with him into here, and if, he, if we didn't draw blue on the card, then he would be able to initiate the attack, and this guy would be able to join in. Um, it feels it feels about that means you're relying on not drawing blue because <laughs> that guy would definitely then be eliminated if you draw blue on the fire card whereas if I move this guy up to here and we do draw blue I've got a chance if it's if it's not a diamond then you know it's got to be a blue diamond for it to take this guy out of the game and, well, it's not going to destroy them, but it is going to disrupt them, and that's going to spoil the party as well. Ah, and you could technically do a bit of both, but the fact he's got debt, he's going to get two shots, that means if you get blue, this is, this is definitely dead as well. There's no real point in that, is there? Um... What was that? It's yellow. Yeah. yeah, it hears me thinking of it. Like, well, we could move this guy into a safer position, but that's an action. Well, actually, we've got three actions. I could do that. I'm moving him out of position X, which is like, we're eventually, well, not until turn 15 grand. That's a long way away. Is that something that might be quite clever? We're not going to take an, uh, what is it, infiltration move because he's disrupted. So I could move this guy down to here. Then we've not got the threat of yellow hitting this guy. He's, he's in a safe hex. And if the, that guy undisrupts next turn, then we've kind of got to go in then because then he's sitting in intense green. But it would allow you to, have that extra action this turn to be able to what was that I was saying move move the tank yeah the other thing about the tank being in beside Major Ryan oh wait a minute that's going to be five steps Grant that's going to be five steps if you do that as well so there's a plus and a minus to that if I'm being stacked with Major Ryan uh like we found out recently, the fact Major Ryan gives everything in his hex a free action. Um, but it would be a, what's it, concentrated target. So then if Blue fired, it would definitely hit one of them. Uh, well, yeah, it would hit that guy. Unless it's a Dharma symbol to check. But I mean, he's, the other guy's three steps anyway. Was it no go for that? Yeah, whatever. It would hit, it would hit one of them. So that then suddenly means that doesn't sound such a great option. Um, and it might be better just moving this a bit slower. Well, that does allow us to maybe take this out. And then just move this guy up. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Right, where's my action markers? So, I'm going to move this guy 
up into here, I think. Yeah. For an action. And then... Yeah, because none of these, none of these units are any, any, any trouble. The only one that's in a bit of trouble is this. And if we move the tank into there, then that's a, and it's any more trouble, really. So let's do that. Let's let's take. Yeah, I still don't think that's not that's not that bad a move, and it would let us have another action, but. What else would you do, Grant? Move these into here, maybe? Is this ranged? No, it's lost its range. This, it's this one. Um... I don't think that would benefit us though, would it? I mean, we'd have to go in with an attack of four on this guy. Ooh, he's got the heavy artillery position there. He is coastal though, so... But it would be an attack of four. And he's getting doubled, isn't he? Because he's in a building. And it's not that we could use a tank for support because... Tank's not sitting in. Hey, actually, stop, Grant. We were talking barrage earlier on. I think the tank would need to be adjacent, wouldn't it? That's my recollection of things before. Tank units must be within range, and one of the following must be true. Tank unit is adjacent to the target X. This is when we're just talking about attacking. The tank unit is adjacent to an attacking infantry unit, and that's what I was thinking there. If he was adjacent to them, he would be able to join on. Tank unit is in command of an HQ, or at least one attacking infantry unit is in command of an HQ, of any HQ. So, yeah, none of that's going to apply. Well, not without me moving this into here and then moving the tank adjacent to it. And then that uses up my last two actions, and then these these guys do nothing. So I get silly, silly to weave these. I could understand me maybe making the move of that to to allow myself another action, but I can't really see. Yeah, and by putting that in there, I was putting it in a slightly dangerous. Yeah, okay, right. Let's just. Take that guy out, Grant, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, now, here's a thought. Is he elite? No. Um, does he go away, or... If we... So, we've got the weapons. Right, now. I just need to know. Japanese unit defeated. Um, if it is from 11P... 111P 4FC or is not in communication put an eliminated Japanese unit's box turn 1 to 16 or remove it from play so it's actually going to go Japanese eliminated units but there's no way of avoiding that unless we close combat it. but uh, yeah you didn't think about that did you Grant he is disrupted, actually. He's disrupted. He's going to get one card and we're going to fire first. And if I, even if I just put that guy in, that's only a two-card draw, though, Grant. Cause it, so if you miss with the first one, he hits. Then that's uh, curtains. So you'd really have to send that guy in. He gets three cards. I suppose I'm just thinking, because if we close combat this guy, um, he's just, uh, what was it? One, what are they from? 111P, yeah. It's just not an elite unit, isn't it? Um, does it tell us about... Uh, close combat. No, it doesn't. 
Wait a minute. I was wondering why I couldn't find it. It doesn't mention the whole numbers of, you know, what brigade or force they're from or whatever. Um, it just says, uh, ending close combat by elimination, place elite units in, the, in close combat and... Place elite units in close combat in the eliminated units box. Remove all non-elite Japanese units eliminated in close combat from play. So the extra, the added bonus to me close combat in this guy is he wouldn't because if I just attack him in the field, which I'm going to be able to, he's going to go in the is it eliminated units. He is going to eliminated units, Grant. But I think some of them will come back in the night turn. I think. But yeah, should I really be concerned about that? I may be more concerned if the, if he's going in the reserve units box, but he's not. But if I do close combat him, he's going to be removed from play. Yeah. Right, my battery's going to die, so I'm only at 36 minutes there though, so I think what I'll do is I'll just pause. I was going to I was trying to squeeze an extra part there. Um, I still ha I still don't have the resolution to um, this. It might be worthwhile leaving it overnight. You never know. I might get a bit more feedback on this situation over here. Uh, oh, I never quite look, see if anybody said anything more. Yeah, no, nothing more for now. So, yeah, maybe let it sit overnight. It has, it has got quite late. And then I was just up for an extra little bit here. So I'll just pause there though. Um, we have taken that one action. And uh, let me, yeah, I'll maybe think a bit more on that. That close combat idea. I mean, I, I kind of wish the five strength one was there because does a uh, does yellow fire in there? Oh, it does actually. I didn't think it did, but I think it's quite hard to see when these palm trees won. Yeah, it does fire in there. Which makes sense, right? But, so, yeah, that's not as good as I thought. Because I know he's sitting in steady yellow and this guy's sitting safe. But it would be better putting him in the close combat rather than this guy. Because strength-wise, but it wouldn't matter anyway. Because they're both, it would mean they'd both be steady yellow. Anyway, I'll, I'll think about that overnight. I'll sweep on that. And then... Uh, I'll come back and finish off these two actions in the morning. And then uh, we might... Well, I'm going to have to make a decision with that. I'll probably go... I mean, the worst worst case scenario for me is that they take it on. So I'll I'll certainly go with that if, if I don't get any more anything more clear uh, stating otherwise. Um, I'll just need to accept that that's how it's going to be. Um and who knows, maybe in the future something might come back, changing that, but that's fair enough. Um, yeah, these games can bring up these situations where maybe not, maybe don't seem 100% clear or or maybe just in my eyes they don't seem 100% clear. Uh, to everybody else, they're all, they're fine with that. They just get on with it, but not Grant. He likes to make a fuss about things. <laughs> Right, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll just, I will just, pa well, I'll pause it and charge the camera, and uh, hopefully that should be all right. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Cheers. Hi all. Right, back now the following day. I just had things on pause um, overnight. There, I wasn't able to get back. Um, so yeah, we haven't. We're in the US action phase. We haven't quite completed it yet. Um, this is a stupid time to bring in these things. Maybe I should finish this turn and this part before I talk about these. Uh, a few comments for John Brown. I think just confirming things and pointing out rules, references, and that, which is nice to have in the in the video comments for that for people that need to look and maybe I've not explained exactly where things are or if, uh, sometimes I say you know leave a comment if about that if you want to comment on that blah blah blah. And John always uh, timestamps things as well, which is really good. You can just click and go and see it, and then um, look what he look what he's saying about what is happening. Um, I'll I'll come back to them. I'll probably start in the next part then talking about them. Like I said, I don't think there's anything there that was uh, a major a mistake as such. I think it's all just confirmations, clarifications, maybe 
there's quite a few to go through. Uh, the one I will talk about though is Martin. Uh, well, maybe I should bring that one up. And um, yeah, hang on. Yeah, the one I will come back. This is regarding just the last no, the last part. I've just I've just put out part eight, but it was part seven. And it was talking about the tank advance bit and eventually um, resolving it and hopefully I got it right. Well, uh, I did. Uh, Martin says, the wording for the default tank advance action is confusing, but it's supposed to work like the redeploy action. So ignore the equidistant from a US unit part. Yeah, and, and in fact, reading that rule by itself, like I say, I think I would quite like to just write down Basically something what he's got here, just so I list the priorities about how you deal with it. Um, so you look for a position that is A, within four hexes of the current position, B, closer to a US unit. Now, closer, it doesn't need to be the closest, closer to a US unit. C, unoccupied. And then D, closest to the current position. Now, if you can't find an unoccupied one, then you could then go to an occupied one. So, so in actual fact, that, that C should say unoccupied, but if you can't find the unoccupied, then you would go occupied and then switch places with it. Um, uh, and then D, closest to the current position. Um, yeah. So I think I think we got that right. After, it, it took a little while, and to be honest, reading the rule in the rule book is just, for me anyway, just like blows you, it just blows your mind. It's like, um, like what's going on here? Uh, what have I just done there? Right. Um, and like he says, you have to ignore the equidistant from a US unit. I think that's what that's what makes a mess of the rule, I think. Um, but I think it, if you if you read the word in the rule, I think it's still telling you the same things. I might be wrong. Maybe it's not. He does say ignore that part. So maybe that, maybe that is the bit that's slightly wrong. However, that's an easier way to look about it. And yeah, it was um, it was like the redeploy action. And like I said, that was a question I went and asked him back a while back, and he went and asked John about it and got confirmation that they should have been the same, and maybe just the wording had come come across differently with the tank advance. So, and he does uh, conclude in this situation that will be E eleven. And what do you know? We're in E eleven, so we got it right. Um, so hopefully now I can go forward with that and. Uh, deal with that situation when it comes up. Like I say, maybe scribble a bit, something like that down on a piece of paper or something, or keep something handy. Um, to be honest, that would be a great bit to have, ha to have been added in a rat as well. But this rat was done 2016, so um, things are still gonna crop up as they do. And um, uh, yeah, I do seem to come up and find some things <laughs> from time to time that, uh, Make me make me wonder and whatever, but um, but it's not it's not just me that's came across the one. There's been asked as well, but in the past, um, so yeah, okay, I'll leave that and I'll get to John's comments at the start of the next part. I think we'll just go over them quickly before we start. Okay, and the other problem that I have is still sitting. I'm afraid. Um, I did reply back to the guys saying that, I th you know, I think they're probably. Probably right, but I could see it being argued. Now, whether Martin feels it's worthy of um, pestering Mr Butterfield with or not, uh, he might, he might. Um, uh, so there's not been any more response, basically what I'm saying. So I'm going to have to make a call with us uh, as a yeah as I finish this turn. So we are going to go with that. So am I not, well, it's not as well just doing that just now? Well, I tell you what, I'll finish off... Because I was still, <laughs> I've got these two actions left, and I was still swithering. I was just looking back at things, wondering, and I thought, oh no, I've not, I'm not finished all this. So I started pondering on on an, uh, a close combat on this, didn't I? But I tell you what, I mean, although if I chuck that guy in close combat, which is obviously the most sensible one, you're going to get three cards over. That guy's only going to give me two cards. But three cards, we get to shoot first, in green. You know, if we don't turn green over with the first card, right, and then he then fires at us with green, we take a step loss and lose our second card. And then our third card, you know, there's no guarantees. And then we miss that guy. Um, however, we both do end up disrupted, don't we? It's just we, we can take that guy out. 
by attacking with both these positions. Now, the, the, the other thing that I, I realised last night, that if I attack it and eliminate it, it goes to the eliminated units box, which is generally okay, you would think. But let's just look. See, see 19, reorganisation. Rule 19. I think it's a night turn. Overnight turn. Um, just let's have a quick look at this. You know, and you might think, well, this is ages away yet. Turn 16 it is, you know. Should we really be looking at this? Well, I got I got caught out in Omaha by not ch not checking carefully about... I don't think it was the amount of positions. Was it about how I had to capture the positions or something? I didn't just double-check it or something. Anyway, I made a blunder with it and then, um, you know, had to start, start it again. That's why there's a take two on that. Um... So where's, where's the bat? Japanese fire phase, the overnight turn. Uh, where does it, ah, here it's here. So this is like, well, actually, end of turn. Yeah, so this is the end of the overnight turn. You would conduct as in the regular sequence of play with the following additions. So Japanese reorganization. Mixed together, face down, all elite eliminated, all. Right, well, there you go then, Grant. Mixed together, face down, all elite eliminated units. Blindly draw half of those units, rounded down, place them in the Japanese reserve box, face down. Then mixed together, face down, ah, all non-eliminated, non-elite eliminated units, but not tank units. Blindly draw two of those units and place them and the Japanese reserve box face down. Yeah, so they, they are going to come back. It means that there's a chance that guy may come back. Um, and then that's that's quite a brutal finish to it, I think. Flip all revealed Japanese units and death markers to the unrevealed side and the death markers. You know, okay, you might be able to remember what they are, but that's not really the point. And the Japanese unit becoming unrevealed again means that if they hit you again, they're then going to disrupt you and... Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah. So, well, yeah, that doesn't then. Um, so, yeah, it does kind of mean that by close combat in this, because we eliminate this by close combat, because <laughs> it's non elite, it gets removed from the game. So, there's not a chance it's coming back. Uh,. I think I'm starting to sway towards it now as well because I know I'm then only going to need to use one action because I'm not going to I'm not going to close combat with both of them. I'm just going to do it with that guy. Okay, this guy's going to be sitting in yellow, steady yellow stall, but this position is yellow anyway. So, and if we attack with both of these, take that out. That's still sitting in the yellow. Okay, that's sitting safe. Uh, if we close combat, he's going to be in yellow. There's a lot of pluses and minuses to it, isn't there? And you can't just, you know, it's not even, it's not that I'm looking at a pit, an intense fire hex, it's, a, it's just a steady, you know, so you've got to take your chances with them. Uh, that would then free us up one action, because it would cost one action for that, and, well, we've used that action there. Yeah, so it would give us the other action to be able to, and what was I contemplating? Yeah, moving the tank two hexes into there turned out to be a bad idea because that would then concentrate this hex. Um, however, what was the other one? Was it maybe moving these guys across into there? Just to have then something that we could go and attack this with? Of course, the tank's not going to be able to support that attack because, like we've said, it needs to be... Adjacent to the attacking unit, it needs to be in, in command of an HQ or needs to be adjacent to the actual unit. I don't know, I don't, I, I'm not, don't know if I'm feeling the, where the other move is really going to be beneficial. I mean, it can only be there, but this guy's not ranged, is he? We looked at that as well, so... So if I do put these two in here and decide they're going to attack, it's only going to be a four strength. They're not getting support from anyone. Not not next turn anyway. Which then doesn't sound that great either, does it? I 
Uh, I want to say also this this tank. I think we talked about that. So it could move two hexes into here. Can it? <clears throat> Which isn't a bad move. Hmm. I just wanted to confirm that again. I'm sure I looked last night, but it does. When it's talking about US units making any of the following actions of eligible, the first action is move up to two hexes on land, and in brackets it's got all units. So that doesn't matter what type of unit it is, it can make that two hex move. Uh, that's not bad. Oh, hang on, no. Then we can't barrage it because we're adjacent to it. Ah! Yeah, I think this would have been the better position, but it's going to um, make this a concentrate target. And I don't really feel like moving into that one. Well, that's just proving the same issues anyway. So I can't actually move this into a blue field of fire, can I? My tank. That's three hexes away, that's three hexes away. That's two hexes away, but it'd be adjacent. Wouldn't be able to... Wouldn't be able to, um, not only I wouldn't be able to barrage it, but I wouldn't be able to attack it either because tanks are additional add ons, um, aren't they? Uh, an attack must include at least one infantry or engineer unit attacking a Japanese occupied hex from an adjacent hex. That's what it must include. You can add on other things like tanks, etc. I mean, if the tank was adjacent, he would be able to join in, but he can't start the fight. Um, he can't be the only one that's involved. So, uh, yeah, it's starting to make me wonder if it's if I really need that extra action. I mean, yeah, I could. You know, I could also move this up to. Well, hold on. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not getting support and fire though, am I? Because that's in there. The tank's not adjacent to it. I need. I need to be able to move that and move the tank to be able to then fire next turn with the four strength and get the assistance from the tank. <laughs> it's not working, Grant. It's not working. Give it up. So it doesn't look like you really need this extra action after all. Well, it's just annoying me because then it might force me into the close combat here. But now, because I've got the two actions, I feel like I should just take on the attack and make it safer. There's, I mean, there is risk other way. And, okay, I'd be... I'd feel confident about taking the guy out, but I could still take a hit. I could still take a hit. If I miss him with the first shot, which is easy. I mean, I, I need to draw green. If I don't draw green, I mass. Uh, he is only going to get one card, isn't he? Yeah, because we know all the information about him. Yeah. Okay, I've just had another little thought. I'm pretty sure this position um, is free to um, reinforce. Uh, no. Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be from the reinforced action. I'm pretty sure there's events out there that will that'll reinforce. But um, if I look up the reinforce action, um, eligible position, an unoccupied position, in Japanese communication, within two axes of a year's unit, if a coastal position must be zoned D, E or F, or oh, as F, um, Place a reserve unit and a depth marker in that position. That's a reinforced action, but, but we are, remember, next turn we're going to flip over another letter. So we flip over letter R, we get yellow on the card with an R. Okay, what are ifs? What are ifs? Um, but um, then that would reinforce with a unit and a depth marker, remember. And I'm pretty sure... I might not show the event in the back of the events box because it doesn't show the it doesn't show the depth, does it? So it might not show it. Uh, no. 
Uh, glancing up at the cards. Don't know if that is that cheating, Grant. Man, I know, I know. In the previous game, you used to get a. Uh, you can get reinforcements arrive, sort of thing. Um, oh well, I must admit, I've not. I've not seen anything there that says to place a reinforcement. So, of all the cards that are out there, anyway. Uh, plenty uh, add depth, but there's none that. Um, Yeah, there's none that seem to place reinforcements. I'm pretty sure Omaha had uh, an event where you would place a reinforcement. So, another thing to think where we, you know, right now we could use this action to either move these two guys in there, move that tank in there. We, we know next turn we're not going to be able to make an attack on that. Well, not true if you move that in. But I don't know if I would want to take that on. That's four strength against... This is getting doubled up, so... Oh, come on, Grant. Me and my dub. Right, okay. I'm, I, I almost says, right, no, let's just go and attack this. But no, I'm not going to... I'm going to move these in. Um, now... Hang on here. Me saying that that would reinforce. Would that reinforce? No, it would not... Because it couldn't trace communication. Mine, it can't trace through the beach. Well, it can go that way anyway. But we would have... Uh, control. We would control... Uh, an infantry with two or more steps. That says infantry there. Does that count engineers? don't think it does. Because in the first part it says, a US unit of the following types controls the hexes it occupies. Infantry will one step, engineers, artillery, headquarters, command posts, garrisons. And then the next part, a US unit of either of the following types control the hex it occupies and all six adjacent hexes around it, even if disrupted. Infantry with two or more steps, tanks of any step level. So, uh... In actual fact, that's that's then saying that these do not control this hex. That seems harsh. It does mean it would surely have worded that. Just check the rata for that for eleven one point one. No, there's nothing there. So it clearly is not. Engineer units do not control the hexes adjacent to them. They're only going to control the hex they occupy. Which, which, like I say, this tank will control this hex, but, and this infantry unit has got two steps. So that would control this hex, but this does not exert control on this hex or this hex. So, so if I do make this move, then that, that position could reinforce. Again, We've got to flip over the R letter to start with. Then we've got to draw the fire card with that yellow R. However, if all that happens, then we'll get a unit with a depth marker there. <laughs> and the, the, the other part of the reason I thought going here was I'm thinking, why not close combat this with these? That's a five card draw against their one. Oh, I just can't make my mind up with this one. Yeah, I'm spending far too long here. I'm going to wimp out and just make the attack. I do feel like that's arguably the wrong call, but. So that's attacking with five strength and it has the mortar, which is relevant. That's attacking with three strength and it has a bazooka, which is also relevant. He's not enhanced by anything. This has got palm trees. Needs a mortar and bazooka. So we've got eight strength against his two. We've got the weapons. We've got more than double. So he is going to be eliminated. <laughs> and I'm still doubting myself here.
yeah, you, you can't keep looking at it. I'm starting to look and think, right, could this not reinforce? Well, this one wouldn't be able to. Um, because that's two steps, isn't it? Yeah. So we've got control over these two hexes, so it, it can't trace communication. But this one would. And the fact that we've now made this position group unoccupied, that it needs to be unoccupied, whereas if that guy's still in there, this is not unoccupied. Well, the position group's not. But you can't, like, look round all of that and try and, you know, say, oh, this could happen, that could happen. Do you want to do this, Grant? I think I'm swaying back to the... <laughs> uh, it's no wonder uh, some folk must switch my videos off and fit to hell with us. <laughs> Okay, I'm doing this. We're not getting any land in next turn. It's not till the next day in turn, but you know, maybe we're trying to push more than we need to. Okay, I'm gonna have an action for them to to move into there then. Um, are you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to conduct an action. This guy's going to move into here. And we're going to have a close combat situation. Let me pause and just <laughs> make sure I'm wanting to do it. Yes, okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it that way. I just want to get moving on before I change my mind again. Right, so... With no more actions, there's no any free actions available across here, so we can't do anything more there. Um, we're going to come back to that close combat, obviously. Um, we need to resolve this situation. Uh, well, there's no point trying to pull off any longer, Grant. So I'll quickly look at the computer to see if anything's been said. The other thing I was thinking here, though, is... I don't know if this is a clever one or not. Uh, now my feeling is the barrage attempt on that's a bit of a weaky weak one and uh, now that's in a crater he's got depth he's not telling me that doubles the depth as well no the only one the, uh, the depth is doubled is the fortified building is it yes yeah the fortified building and that's the one that's got the Heavy black border around that. Is that the one there? Yeah, you can see the heavy black border around D5 there. So that is... Uh, yeah, that's annoying. He's in there. <laughs> we had that position. Uh, yeah, that went horribly wrong. Um, so yeah, making an attack with this guy next turn sounds like a plan. Um, we can also get the support from the tank because he is adjacent. Well, he's also in command. Um, but what I thought here was, and I don't know if it's a good move or not, but these are all a little bit weak anyway, was move the HQ into here. Uh, now, hold on there, Grantos. That would be an infiltration move. Can I not, just thinking there, can I not move two hexes and go one, two? I think I can. Um, if not, I mean, because moving from there to there, it would be classed as an infiltration move. I don't even know if him as a hero HQ can actually carry that move out, even. Even if I wanted to. Well, what I'm thinking is that, okay, it, it does then mean that these two units and this unit are not going to get free action. But, what am I really going to do with these guys just now? Yeah, I was going to say this guy's sitting safe, but technically he's not from that tank can fire in there. But what am I going to do with that? I don't think I'm going to move these, you know? So it's all very well giving them a free action, you know, if they could do something like, I don't know, dig in or something. But there's none of that nonsense, you know, the... the I can only either move, make make a move with them, or attack something. I can't. They can't attack something. So it might be that it's a good idea to put that in there to give the extra, either the extra plus one strength or the wild card. 
mean, don't get me wrong, this is a full, this is a heavy infantry unit, so it's got everything. Um, and you're getting, you're getting, what is it, arm, you'll get artillery from the tank, will you? What do you get from the tank? It's a two-step tank. You get AR and BZ, so artillery and bazooka, and, uh, oh, and if it's within four hexes of the target, you add machine gun. But however, this, this guy alone gives machine gun and bazooka anyway. And he adds a flamethrower as he is. So you're getting artillery from the tank. So what other weapons are you really going to need, Grant? Well, the only one could be naval, naval fire. Yeah, that's the only one that that's the only one it could give you. But I could get you the extra one strength. That would be eight up to nine, ten, eleven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I doubt that's going to make any difference. If it was knocking it up to twelve, that would have made a difference, maybe. Um. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'll I'll just what was I going to go and look at there? Yeah, to see if he was allowed to make that infiltration. Um. Infiltration move. If you're moving a US infantry or engineer unit from a hex adjacent to a uh, field of fire and occupied and non destructive Japanese position to a hex that is also adjacent to. Does it say infantry or engineer unit? Hey, excuse me, not attempt an infiltration move on their own, but may move with a regular unit attempting an infiltration. Excuse me. Uh, tank units making this move do not check for Japanese fire. Artillery units may not conduct an infiltration move. So, so he can't do that. But it feels like, it feels like I shouldn't be able to make this two hex move, but um, move up to two hexes on land, all units. We know this is a unit. We've worked that one out. We based, That's why that's got depth, because that's a unit. So, unless somebody tells me I've got that wrong... Um, and then, so the moves that are going to limit you to one hex and 7.31, let me just check her out, oh, there's nothing there, no, uh, it says, right, hang on, no, 7.3, action, move up to two hexes on land, a unit starting its turn in a land hex may move one or two hexes in any direction on land. The terrain effects chart lists terrain that restricts or prohibits movement for certain unit types. So, looking at the terrain chart, the only thing, I think I've said this before, the only thing, see, any of these units, so they're all yes, we can move beach clear, airstrip, we can move through palm trees, buildings, fortified buildings, rough craters, seawall hexes, there's, there's no restriction there for US infantry and engineer. For all other units, there's no restriction there, 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 or even the seawall hex. The only one is the rough crater. And this is anything other than a US unit. No, no, hang on. No, no, it even states there HQ. So infantry, engineer, and HQ. So there's nothing that's going to stop us terrain-wise. Okay? So... <clears throat> And the only one that does stop is anything not an infantry engineer HQ going through a rough crater. It can move into it, but it must stop. So if it was trying to use its two hex movement, it would have to stop moving in there on the first hex. So moving on, 7.31, moves limited to one hex. A unit must end its move. If it enters a hex in the intense field of fire of a non-disrupted enemy position, or a hex adjacent to an enemy unit, even if disrupted. So, that's the unit's got to end its move, but you can see here, this is in steady blue field of fire. So I can go one, and then I can go two. And the fact that I'm starting in an intense field of fire, and I'm also starting adjacent to the unit, it doesn't really, I don't really say there's any issue with that. I don't know, I actually might just leave it there, because I'm, I'm actually thinking that what benefit is it really going to do? Well, then we find naval or NA on the chip. It's just a coastal chip, a uh, coastal depth marker. So, and then I'll tell you something you could find. You could find flanking on it. 
then if you left this guy there, we would then maybe be able to move this guy into there to create the flanking situation. Okay, it's a horrible hex that, but whether that whether that would be silly or not. I don't know. I know I never know how to deal with these situations. You know, if you got flanking on that, is it not better just to chuck the guy in and close combat it? You know? That's steady field of fire of brown, blue and red. That's intense field of fire of brown, blue, red, and green. <laughs> and in actual fact, purple would fire in it with steady as well. That, and they're all intense, so. Okay, right, let's quickly look at the computer and resolve this situation first, because this video's getting long, Grant. Okay, nothing more being said. Well, it makes me think that the guys aren't willing to add any more. They feel what they feel. Uh, the only thing could be that Martin may have when they asked John, but we don't know when the answer to that could come. That could be a while. So I'm going to go ahead with what they believe. And I reckon they're, they're probably right. Um, uh, and we'll just need to accept that if, if it does come back and this wouldn't have done that, then we've learned from that mistake. And it's, it's not 100% it's not clear in the rules for sure. So Okay, so just moving back into the Japanese attack, um, Japanese fire card phase. This is going to have made um, a close combat on this, so let's just deal with this. The attack is in this red position, and it would be that. It needs to go, uh, and just to... Oh, Grant, come on. This video's going to get long and long. Uh, what am I doing? Assault. So, just to let you know, we are now looking... If a Japanese occupied in one position has no US units in its field of fire, which is what the case was then. Um, move the Japanese unit and depth marker. It's not got a depth marker. Two position hex, no more than three hexes away from its current position and closest to the nearest US unit. Well, one, two, these all were three away. Um, uh, it has to be empty. Don't think you can move it in there. Is that right? The unit may move into an unoccupied or US occupied position X. Yeah, so it can't move into there. It's got and it's three X's away. These are not position hexes. This is the only position hex and it's got a US unit in it. So uh unoccupied or US occupied, that's what it's doing. If I enter a US occupied position hex, conduct close combat. Uh, and then if two or more it's closest to the Japanese unit's current position, then you choose. Um, but it wasn't. That's only that's only one it can be, right? Okay. So let's get close combat going again. And well, I know my units are better here, but the fact we're starting disrupted is just a horrible disadvantage to just start with. So, um, okay. So what we got? Um, that's the situation we've got. And right. Well, we need to know what he has got. He has a wheat, so I suppose that's plus a plus. It doesn't really do anything for him. Um, okay, yeah, and he's no CC on him, and he's not got four strength. So the good thing is he's only getting one card. Does that? No, he's getting two cards because he's attacking. Ah, okay, so we've revealed that, and we're going to draw a card. So we're going to get one, two, three, four cards. Four or four steps. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, four or four steps. He is going to get... With, now, we've no engineer with flamethrower. We've no heroes, right? He is going to get one for the unit and one because he's attacking. So he's going to get two cards. Yeah, if he was only getting one, that would have been fine, actually. Right, well, we need some luck. We didn't get on that last close combat, but I mean, we had had it throughout the, all the close combats up until then, I think. Uh, so now, are the Japanese units disrupted? No. If they were, we would remove them and move on. So we're going to reveal a card for them. They're going to fire first. We are firing in the red position. So anything red is bad. Ooh, what about that? Great start. No CC event. No red, no result. 
So we, yo, I tell you what, come on, just make that one the same and we're golden. Don't spoil any reinforced nonsense. Right, so now it goes down to step four. Are the US units disrupted? Well, yes, they are. So we remove, remove the disruption and we skip ahead to five, which is um, repeat steps three and four. So we now go back to the Japanese. So basically, we just get to remove that disruption. He's now going to fire again. Looking for red. Ah, Well, I tell you what, no event. So no reinforce. This is his last card, but he does hit us. We lose a card. That is not red. Um, and we take a hat. Uh, ooh, that's a tough one. Um... I think we've I'm tempted to eliminate the unit. What is H two A? I just wanted to look at it. It's four strength. That's what we would be getting. I mean, we're losing the range and two strength. I think I'm going to take the hat on this guy. Oops. Yeah. H two A. Where did he come from? Where did he come? Ah, oh, there. Um, how many cards have we got left? We've got, we've got three cards, so I mean, surely there's a red in that bunch. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the hit on this. I know it's eliminating another unit, but it feels like this is quite a strong, the way it is. So let's go with that. We'll eliminate that. That's our step one. We get the choice for that. Right, come on, Grant. All you need is a red. Let's not mess about. Let's just have it on the first card. And we'll put the other two cards back on top. Come on. Yes. No event. Red. He's gone. Right, well, there you go. After all that and making that move. Right, I'm going to put these two cards back on top of the deck. Because they weren't looked at. We get that guy. And he goes eliminated units, doesn't he? Uh, eliminated elite units go in the eliminated units box, yeah. So he's going up. He's going up beside the pile here. And these are the ones that will cycle. We'll get some of them back through the, on the night turn. Okay, well, that went better then, for sure. I mean, we took one step loss, but I'd, I accept that. So he stays in this position. Uh, and unfortunately, is moving back to a disrupted state. Because he was involved in close combat. That would have then ended the Japanese fire phase. So they've actually moved out of that purple position completely. Which is sort of nice. Um, not that we've got anything sitting in purple. This is the only one that's purple's firing in there, isn't it? Right, so that's that resolved. So let's, um, let's now move. I know it's a jump ahead. So we're jumping ahead to our US action phase now. And we're just going to finish that off. We've got no pay, no more paid actions to use. However, we are going to get to undisrupt that guy. And the US action phase. Um, and oh, uh, yeah, we can have a, we can have a pot shot barrage at Brown. It's oh no, he's on his own. He's not got depth this time, so it might just be the color we need. Um, yeah, because we can't. Really do anything else apart from moving the tank, which doesn't look like a great idea. No. No. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to barrage. So we're gonna get a free action from the hero, uh, the headquarters. He is sitting in steady brown, so we're gonna barrage this position here or attempt to. Um. So, does it give you barrage? It doesn't really tell you, does it? It's quite, quite a look again. I know, I looked at it recently, didn't I? So that's the barrage. Um, uh, if either of the following are true, it, it can be adjacent. Tank unit is in range, but not adjacent. And either of the following are true. The tank unit occupies a hex in the field of fire of the target hex. So he's, he's in the field of fire at brown. So he can do that. Whereas I couldn't, 
I couldn't go for that purple position, for instance. So we're going to attempt to barrage that. Now I'll just use the chart. Um, there are two strength, but the unit's on its own. It's not got depth this time, so that's... So we're looking at this. Um, does the Japanese unit have depth? No. Uh, no. So yeah, we do need the colour. Forget the colour. And not the symbol. Because he's not got depth, we would disrupt him. Yeah, so we only need the colour. Um... Yeah, so we only need brown. So we'll draw a card, uh, find some brown, and that'll be a good finish to things. Uh, draw a card, card. Right. Right, show me brown. Yes, excellent. So we do get the barrage, we get that guy disrupted, and that. That means that, you know, that helps a bit because that's sitting in brown. That was sitting in brown, and also the tank was sitting in brown, you know, so. Because that's a three position group, it stretches out to a way to there, even though it's just that unit that's involved. So, uh, so this is a new yes, action phase, yeah. So he, he has disrupted, yeah. Okay. And then I don't think I'm going to move that hero. No. Because he's given both of them a free action. So, um, so the last thing. Oh no, we've got close combat to do Stolkrant. Right, I think, mm, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave this so that it does give these two a free action. You know, I was talking about making that move, but let's not do that. So, okay, I'm done with everything. We're going to conclude our US action phase by carrying out this close combat here. Um, I'll take, I'll just take that US action marker away. Hopefully, well, this is coming to the end of the video anyway, so I'll not start thinking I've got another, another action. Right, so, all right, hang on, that's with him, no with us, <laughs> or we probably wouldn't be doing this. Right, okay, so the close combat hex is green. Um, we've revealed this, okay, all good. We're getting three cards, he's getting one card. We are the attacker this time, remember? So we get three, and he's only getting one. Well, let's just hope it's not green, okay. I'm hoping that's not going to matter what it is, but... Um, so, and then, is he disrupted? Yes. So we take the disruption marker away and we fire first. So we're going to draw a card and we're looking for green. Here we go. Don't let me down. Yes. Perfect. Wow, I, I'm really working out of the close combat. I've, I've really drawn... Uh, I shouldn't say it. Uh, I suppose the reinforce... See how many times I've drawn that reinforce action. So you can imagine what the game, since they changed that rule, because that used to then be you wouldn't hit the unit, but it would, it would just offset each other. You know, that was a pain. it was a pain. I remember playing it that way. Um, so, yeah, we get the result. He discards his card, which technically I'll do. Oh, look at that. It didn't have green on it anyway. Um, and he's gone. Now, he's removed from the game, isn't he? Uh, eliminated non-elite unit that was removed from play so he goes in the back in the box and that was part of the reason I'd done that but we survived without a hat um, look there's me knocking things again that is an E11 though that's the one with the tank advance on it uh, we're going back in this position we are going to be disrupted however so that is the downside to that one but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I d yeah, because now now I feel like I'm going to, if I, I, assuming these don't get disrupted, um, probably going to make a close combat, I think. Because there's too much to wait. I've to wait too long on things. If I was going to get an attack at that next turn, well, yes, we could attack rather than close combat, but I don't think that's going to happen. Right, we have two cards left. I'm just going to put them back on top of the deck. And that's the... That's our turn over. Yes, right, so I'll just clear things up a bit. Right, I think that's everything tied up. Two action markers off, reset the units. Um, that guy is disrupted. He's disrupted in close combat. That's only when our units are disrupted. It's Japanese unit disrupted when it, it close combat and blue was not on the fire card. 
and this one was disrupted with a barrage, which was after their fire phase. So, yeah, okay, looking good. Uh, I've discarded the cards, the discard piles less than the deck, so move the phase marker back, and well, um, move the turn marker on. So, turn five. Right, we're going to draw the next action. Um, well, I'll just flip. No. Yeah, just while I'm remembering, I'm going to. Well, yeah, it is the start of the turn. Uh, I'm cutting the video, but let's look at the next action and see. Um, right, well, there you go. There's the first part of that bit I was talking about. So it is the R action. So along here, if this was to. If we draw a yellow R, this will reinforce. But there's loads of other places that will probably happen as well. If it's a green R, this is going to reinforce. You know, like you can't cover all these bases. You just can't. Just can't. Um, okay, so I'll be back. Um, hopefully not too long, actually. I think, I think I can start another bit um, quite shortly. But I better get this cut because that's creeping up on an hour and a half now. Uh, so I'll be back in a bit. Cheers.